Oh Lord. Hello and aloha po. I changed my watch from this hand to this hand. It was affecting my wrist. Time is 11.19. Today is 16th of September. My God, time goes fast. Well, it seems every day my hardware is turning into software and going down fast. Well, I want to be back again as a young person and do things from the beginning. Oh, God, no, 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 no. I just wish this comes to an end as soon as possible. Switch is not in my hand. Anyways, my name is Abbas Temori and I am the elder of Baha'u'llah. He's a special envoy on the earth. And uh, there's an ocean of things for me to do. And I'm absolutely one single man. What is this? Is this an indicative I'm um, uh, so hard to understand? Or people just have lost their desires? You know, anyways, I'm going to continue this valley of unity as it is translated here. And I got a few tasks. One of them is that definitely this has to be retranslated simply because the person who translated it absolutely is a master in English language. However, she was not a master in understanding the original concept of these tablets. Uh, Baha'u'llah says one simple word, but he's referring to certain things. So one has to really be thorough with it to understand. This has happened in the translation of the Tablet of Wisdom by the Universal House of Justice. Uh, not by Universal, but by the whoever did the translation. Uh, because the language is tangible and intangible. When it's tangible, when you talk about the translation of tomato, it's very simple. But you want to say what's unity, what's love, and all that, it seems everybody has his own dictionary. They all define it accordingly. So many of the time in these translations, people translate their understanding of the topic. Or they sometimes take the word literally and they translate that. But that word is not simply a common word. It's also a specific word referring to certain philosophy, for example. So one has to know these things. All right, a bit of uh, prelude. So I'm going to read it and trying to translate it and then possibly explain a few things of my own on it. All right, he says, and uh, <clears throat> enter the valley of unity and drink it from the cup of absolute. This cup of absolute has to be changed to chalice of oneness. I have the original in front of me. She has translated the word Hajrid in Arabic has to be meaning absolute, which is not a proper translation. Absolute would be mutlak, not tajrid. Tajrid is the word that comes, one of the words that we have, Persian might understand it, is the word mujarrat. Tajrid means single, mujarrat means bachelor. Tajrid of God means to understand, to make God to be a bachelor. Singleness. That's what it means. The translation of Tajrid should be really singleness. Drink it from the cup of absolute, I said the chalice of singleness. And gaze it on the manifestation of oneness. Yeah. For the oneness, she has translated for tafrid. That is correct. Because tafrid comes from the word fard. Fard means one, 
single. So one, when you say tafrit, means making God to be one. So that is then oneness in English. But if you want to make him to be bachelor, then you have to say singleness. All right. In this station, he pierced the veils of plurality, fleet from the world of flesh. The word flesh is not here uh, correct and it's not in translation. The actual word is hava, and hava means passion. So it should be fleet from the worlds of passion and ascended into the heaven of singleness. Again, I've said singleness. So, if you want to understand what would be useful to you, you have to get a copy of this Fort Valley, download it from your computer under the Universal Laws of Justice, Baha'i.org, and then follow along with me so we can read it together. With the ear of God, he hear it. Not really. We can't really hear from the ear of God. It should be saying that with the divine ear he heareth. With the eye of God he beholdeth the mystery of divine creation. He has stepped into the sanctuary of the friend and shareth as an intimate the pavilion of the loved one. He stretched out the land of the truth from the sleeve of the absolute oneness you know better he revealeth the secret of power he seeth in himself neither name nor fame nor rank but findeth his own praise in praising God he beholdeth in his own name the name of God to him all songs are from King. Before the word king, I added the word the divine king. Because if you say all songs are from king, is rather ill defined. We know by king means God, so it's a divine king. And then the divine king, then we know what we're talking about. All songs are from the divine king, and every melody from him. He seated on the throne of say, all is from God, which is the quotations translated, okay. By the way, I'm not trying to really retranslate this. I'm not going to take that time to do that. <clears throat> and I think we can live with this. This is fine. As long as this uh, uh, few suggestions that I made, if others have better suggestions, just add it to it. It has to be within the bracket added to so people can read, you know, get what's the idea. So, continue. And every melody from him, he seated on the throne of Seol is from God and taketh his rest on the carpet. No, on the domain. Or carpet has to be changed to the domain. In the domain of. There is no power or might but in God. This is the quotation translated. Shoghi Effendi has translated a little differently. I prefer to put that one in because it's infallible. He has said instead of saying there is no power or might but in God, he says there is no power nor strength but in God alone. He looketh. I put a slash she because uh, really it is he here, so much is used in Persian, is not signifying a he that is she can get to these things. Very, very important. I said to you that all the writing of Baal, whenever he says he, if it is not a specific to a single fellow, in general, he and she are the same. Okay? Looketh. He says he looketh. I said. I changed it to observe it. He observeth on all things with the eye of oneness. Instead of eye of oneness, I said that unifying eye. Because that's what Tawheed, which is the original word for unity, means. Tawheed means to make everything united, one. So it's the unifying, 
rally of the unifications, unifications of the ideas. This when we read about the unity, it's not to uh, so talk about unity of God as such. No, this is the unity of the, our ideas, of our understanding. Uh, why is it called the valley of unity? Essentially, is because uh, Christians, you know, they have uh, Father, Son, and God, and Muslims are very much against this idea as about one God, no three gods. Although the Bible says clearly all the three are nothing but one in the Bible of John. But the Muslim have taken it as Christians believe that there are three gods, you know, God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Ghost. So, Tawheed means going against this idea of the uh, Christianity. Believe that God is all one, you see. The whole idea of Tawheed means this. So, where were we? So, with the eye of oneness, I say unifying God. And see it the brilliant rays of the divine sun shining from the dawning point of the essence alike on all created things and the lights of singleness, which I said unity in here, reflected over all creation. It is clear to thine eminence, now Baha'u'llah is talking to this fellow who has asked him these questions. It is clear to thine eminence that all the variation which the wayfarer in the stages of his journey beholdeth in the realm of being. It's not the realm of being, it's the realm of creation. Hasti is not being. Hasti here means creation. So, in the realm of being, correction, creation, proceed from his own vision. We shall give an example of this, that its meaning may become fully clear. Consider the visible sun, although it shined with one radiance upon all things, and the behest of the king of manifestation, manifestation divine king, I said, and at the behest of the manifesting divine king, it's my word instead of king of manifestation, bestoweth light on all creation, yet in each place it becometh manifest and shedeth its bounty according to the potentiality of that place. For instance, an a mirror reflected its own disk and shape, and this is due to the sensitivity of the mirror. In crystal it maketh fire to appear, and in other things it showeth only the effect of its shining, but not its full disk and yet though the effect by the command of the creator it traineth each things according to the quality of that thing as though observest in like manner color became visible in every object according to the nature of that object for instance in the yellow globe she says globe now in yellow crystal the rays shines yellow in a white the rays are white and in a red the red rays are manifest then these variations are from the object not from the shining light and if a place be shot away from the light as by the walls of the roof, it will be certainly, it will be entirely breathed of the splendors of the light, nor will the sun shine thereon. This again is very simple, that uh, since we're all, many of us, we're not all along, it seems we are in the world of a spectrum, and uh, like a rainbow, and uh, the truth of God is that one invisible light or visible light, a white light, but in the rainbow it shows many, many colors. Each one of us have certain potentiality, that uh, faculties that we have, that we can shine certain attributes and qualities. And he says all of this is not due to the naturally the light itself, but as the recipient of the light, you know, wherever the light goes, this is us. This is that, thus it is certain, thus it is, that certain invalid souls have confined the land of knowledge within the wall of self, 
Self here has, does not have a positive meaning. Therefore, it has to be translated as ego. Then, because nafs, nafs, in Persian it means self, selfhood, but it also means ego. So, thus, it is that certain invalid, invalid souls have confined the lens of knowledge within the wall of self, my translation within bracket, ego, and passion, and clouded them with the ignorance and blindness. And, I just added, thus have been wailed from the light of the mystic sun and the mysteries of the eternal beloved. They have astrayed afar from the jeweled wisdom of the lucid, lucid fate of the Lord of the Messengers, within bracket meaning Muhammad, have been shut out of the sanctuary of the all beauteous one and banished, not banished, and separated from the Kaaba of a splendor, such is the worth of the people of this age. And when I tingle, soar upward from the clay of the self and dwell in the rose bower of the heart and in Arabian melodies and sweet Iranian songs. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Okay. Thanks God there's a standard of Shoghi Effendi. For the Arabian melodies, the actual word is Naqamaut Hejazi, which Shoghi Effendi, translated in the Book of Certitude, the melodious language of Hijaz. And for the Iranian song, I don't know where she get Iranian from because the word is Iraq, not Iran. It says the wondrous accent of Iraq. So, Arabian melodies by the sound of Shoghi Effendi should be changed to the melodious language of Hijaz. And Iranian songs has to be changed by the Shoghi Effendi as a standard as the wondrous accent of Iraq. Okay, recount the mysteries of God, a single word of which quickeneth to a fresh new life the bodies of the death and bestow with the Holy Spirit upon the moldering bones of this existence. Uh, existence again, people. Here, existence is referring to the people, not, not all the existence. Baha'u'llah has not come to change exactly, you know, the material or the things. He has come to change the world of existence of man. Thou, thou wilt behold a thousand claws of envy, a myriad beak of rancor hunting after him, and with all their power intend his death. So where is she getting these Arabian melodies and Iranian songs is because she's thinking uh, Hijaz, which is a place in Saudi Arabia, probably is a reference to the revelation of Muhammad which came from there, and then Iraq, which Baha'u'llah says Iraqi, Lahn Iraqi, she's thinking perhaps that means Iranian, because Baha'u'llah came from Iran. Whereas these two things, Hijaz and Iraq, is not a reference even to those places. These are just the names of some tunes in the music. You know, Quran is chanted different like your Psalms as you do it in the Christianity. But Quran is chanted differently by the people of Hijaz, by the people of Iraq, by the Egyptian, and by the uh, people of the Moor, the Marrakesh. So, and their musics, simply. So Baha'u'llah is a referring of saying those things that we've said before, we're gonna tell it differently right now. I guess because uh, he was in Iraq. But then he complains that the people are after him so badly because that was the day he just came, you know, from the mountain that he went into exile, put himself in there. This is what I mean, you have to know a few things. If you know uh, Hejaz and Iraq with re reference to the tunes and the musics, you know, then um, like you have, you say, popular music, I don't know. Uh, rock and roll and so on. So is in Iran and uh, in Arabs. They have 
several ways of you know systems. Let's continue. You are the beetle. You are the beetle, abject beetle. Uh, she's she's translated. You are the beetle, a sweet fragrance cement, a sweet fragrance cement fowl, and to the man, sycovarium, a pleasant perfume is as not. Wherefore it had been set for the guidance of the ignorant. Cleanse thou the realm from out thine head, and breath the and breathe the breath of God instead. That's fine translation. But the beetle, abject beetle, that's why Shrogi Effendi for this word Joal is using the abject beetle. Because when you say beetle, you know you're talking about we're talking about an uh, insect actually. Okay, number 20. I'm going to have to go. I'm going good. I'm going to go to the next one. So this is lots to do. In some, the difference in the objects have now been made manifest. Thus, when the wayfarer gazeth only upon the place of appearance, that is, when he seeth only the many colored globe, he beholdeth yellow, red, and white. Hence it is that conflict had prevailed among the creatures. And a darksome dust from the limited souls had hit the world. And some do gaze upon the effulgence of the light, and some have drunk. I changed it to quaffed, which is a standard of Shobi. And some have drunk, but in bracket, quaffed of the wine of oneness, and uh, these within bracket, and they, not these, and they see nothing but the sun itself. So, it's the story really, because the way we're looking at these uh, glasses, and then we say I see red and white and blue, therefore that's a problem. Uh, uh, there are many, many stories in Iran about explaining how people, you know, their concept uh, is because they just have this tunnel vision seeing only one thing, the causes. I'm going to uh, not get into that. I guess the, the, the topic is very simple. Thus, for they that move on these three different planes, the understanding and the word of the wayfarer have deferred, and hence the sign of conflict doth continually, continually appear on earth. No, not earth, on world. For some there are for some there are who dwell upon the plane of oneness unity and I speak of that world and some inhabit the realm of limitations and some the garden of self while others are completely veiled thus do the ignorant people of the day who do not who have no portion of the radiance divine beauty make certain claims, not claims, a statement, certain claim, in bracket, a statement, and in every age and cycle inflict on the people of the sea of oneness. I change that into the denizen of the reviving waters of unity. The people of the sea of oneness, uh, it has to be denizens of the reviving waters of unity. What they themselves deserve should God punish man for their perversing, for perverse doing, he would not leave on earth a moving thing, but to an appointed term doth the he respite them. It's very close to Shogaf and the Shogaf translated this verse is if God should chastise men not punish chastise men for their perverse doing he would not leave upon the earth a moving things but to an appointed time does he respite them very close oh my brother a pure heart is a mirror cleanse it with the burnish of love and severance what a word, severance. Now change it to detachment from all save God 
that the true sun may shine within it and the eternal morning dawn. Then wilt thou clearly see the meaning of neither doth my earth nor my heaven contain me. God says I am not contained in this whole world but in the heart of the people. But the heart of my faithful servant containeth me. Quotation from Islam. And thou wilt take up the life in thine hand and with infinite longing cast it before the new before the new beloved one. Whence over the light of manifestation of the king I change it to the monarch of the oneness settled upon the throne of the heart and soul, his shining becometh visible in every limb and member. At that time the mystery of the famed tradition glimmered out of the darkness. Servant is drawn unto me in prayer until I answer him, and when I have answered him, I become the ear wherewith he heareth. And then there's some dots. There should be a bracket at the end of the dot, etc. Paul did not recite all of this. For thus the master of the house had appeared within his home, and all the pillars of the dwellings are ashine with his light, and the action and the effect of the lights are from the light giver. So it is that all move through him and arise by his will. And this is that spring whereof the near ones drink, as it is said, a fount wherefore the near unto God shall drink. Again, this is a verse of Quran. However, let none construe these utterances to be, ooh, very difficult word even for me to say it. Anthro, anthropomorphism, yeah, anthropomorphism, true nor see in them the descent of the world of God into the grades of creature, nor should they lead thine eminence in such assumption, for God is in essence holy above ascent and descent, entrance and exit. For the entrance and exit, uh, Shoghi Effendi has used egress and regress. He hath through all eternity been free, I change it free to independent of the attributes of human creature, no, of human being, and ever will remain so. No man had ever known him, nor, nor no soul had ever found the pathway to his being. Every mystic knower had wandered far astray in the valley of the knowledge of him. A change is far astray in the valley of the knowledge of him. I said in the valley of his understanding. Every saint had lost his way in seeking to comprehend his essence. Sanctified is he above the understanding of the wise. Every wise one, not the wise, but every wise one. Exalted is he above, not above, beyond the knowledge, not knowledge, beyond the comprehension of knowing. In the word of knowing, see, beyond the comprehension of any man of understanding. The way is bored and the seeking is impiety. Shoei says the way is bored and all the seeking rejected. His proof is his signs, his being is his evidence. That is the translation of Shobi Effendi. So, there is a lot more to do. To so just read this. My God, let's continue reading it anyways now. Uh, maybe we have to take another time to explain. Wherefore the lover of the face of the beloved change of the face of the beloved to of the countenance of the well beloved have said although the one whose essence alone showed the way to his essence 
and was sanctified above any likeness to his creature. How can near how can utter nothingness gallop its steed in the field of pre existence or a fleeting shadow reach to the everlasting sun? The friend had said, But for thee we have not known thee, and the beloved had said, Nor attained thy presence. These are quotations from the Islam. Yeah, these mentions that have been made of the grades, no, of the levels of the knowledge relate to, no, indicates the knowledge of the manifestation of that sun of reality which casted its light upon the mirror and the splendor of that light in the heart. Yet it is hidden under the veiling of the sense and the condition of this earth. I change this, yet it is. I change it to which is hindered by the densest wails of the carnal desire. Even as a candle within a lantern iron and only when the lantern is removed doth the light of the candle shine it out. In like manner, when thou strip the wrapping of the illusion of thine heart. Hmm, I've changed the whole thing. In like manner, when thou, this is my translation, when thou render asunder the wheels of error, then, continue, the light of the oneness will be made manifest. This way of talking is not useful to you unless you have a copy of it in front of you to fix it up, at least understand what this is all about. Then it is clear that even for the rays there is neither entrance nor exit. Changed it. Then it is clear that even for the, this is my translation, the revelation there is neither egress or egress or regress. Show we offend is actually. How much less for the essence of being and that longed for, no, that most beloved mystery. Oh, my brother, journey upon these plains in the spirit of search, no, in the spirit of investigation, not in blind imitation. A true wayfarer will not be kept back by the bludgeon. Actually, it should be by the warning of words, nor debarred by the warning of it should be by the pompous allusions. Baha'u'llah is the word, she says a bludgeon, which is like a stick. Baha'u'llah says, yeah, the word, the warning, you know, the warning says durbash, means stay away. The word says stay away. It says you shouldn't care about the word, it says warning, stay away. So it can't be bludgeon, it's by the warning. Again, kept back by the bludgeon, within bracket warning of the words, nor debarred by the warning of, within bracket, pompous illusion. How shall a curtain part the lover and the beloved? I change it. I change it. What is curtain between the lover and beloved? What is curtain? What is curtain between the lover and beloved? My translation. Not Alexander's wall can separate them. No. Translation. The dam of Alexander is neither neither an obstacle nor a rampart. They say Alexander, I had this story said that in the Masna with you that he built these walls, you know, this dam, it's like still, still they say they are somewhere in Iran on the Caspian Sea. So it's the dam is not a wall, well a wall is a dam, but he built that so. I changed that, Alexander, the, the, the Dam of Alexander is neither an obstacle nor rampart. It's my translation. 
Secrets are many. I changed it. Mysteries are multifarious. Multifarious. Multifarious means many. I added the word but. She, she says bad, but actually it's not bad. It has to be and. So secrets are many, but strangers are myriad. I changed it that. Mysteries are multifarious and foes are myriad. Strangers is not giving a meaning here. It's the foe. Show me if Andy says foe. Foes are myriad. Volumes will not suffice to behold the mysteries of the Beloved One. It is not volumes. It should be the Chronicles will not suffice to hold the mystery of the Beloved One. Nor can it be exhausted in these pages, not pages, in these tablets. Although it be no more than a word, no more than a sign, knowledge is a single point. But the but is an extra, does not need to have a word but. Knowledge is a single point, the ignorance have multiplied it. Not ignorant, but ignorance have multiplied it. That's the true translation. Okay. On this same basis, ponder likewise the differences among the world, although the divine world are never ending, yet some refer to them as four. The world of time which is the one that had both a beginning and an end, the word of duration, dar, which is correct, I accept that, which had a beginning, but whose end is not revealed, and the word of perpetuity, sarmat, could be right, whose beginning is not to be uh, sent, is not to be seen, but which is... Uh, but which is known to have an end, and the world of eternity, Azal, which is neither a beginning nor an end, which is visible. Although, there are many different statements as this poem to recount them in detail would result in weariness. Thus, some have said the world of perpetuity have neither a beginning nor an end, and have named the world of eternity as the invisible, impregnable, Imperians, other have called these the word of the heavenly court, Lahut, of the Imperian heaven, Jabarut, of the kingdom of the angels, Malakut, and the mortal world, Nasut. The journey in the pathway of love are reckoned as four, from the creature to the true one, and from the true one to the creature, from the creature to the creature, and from true one to true one. True one means God. Um, this is a reference uh, to actually a tablet that one of these uh, authorities, Turkish authorities, I don't know, Pasha, I mean general, I guess, somebody in the army, came as Baha'u'llah about the meaning of the uh, one of the tradition in Islam, and Baha'u'llah Sim was busy and asked Abdul Baha to do it. He was 14 years old. And Abdul Baha has written at age 14 one of the most astonishing writing. That is absolutely a miracle. It is impossible at the age of 14 to write that. And Abdul Baha explained this. It is in one of his volumes. Um, I might have to, the next time, to explain. What is he saying of all this for? And a love of God towards himself and God, love of people towards themselves, and love of God for people, and love of people for God, you know. Uh, they were, uh, they're trying to create method, you know, like you guys do in create a theorem for mathematics. They were creating theorem how to reach God and what could love be and this and that and that. So, there is many an utterance of the mystic secret and the doctors uh, of the former time, which I have not mentioned here since I mislike. What's mislike means, guys? Should we dislike? Since I dislike the, the copious citation from the saying of the past, 
uh, for quotations from the word of the others prove it acquired learning, not a divine bestowal. Even, even so much as we have quoted, there is out of deference to the want of the men and other manner of the friends. For such matters are beyond the scope of this epistle. Our unwillingness to recount their saying is not of the pride, rather it's a manifestation of wisdom and a demonstration of the grace. If Hezr did wreck the vessel on the sea, yet in this wrong there are a thousand right. You just refer to that Masnavi that I told you, this word Hezr has come uh, in his Masnavi and I've explained it before. The Khazr is somebody that goes with the Moses and the, in the ship you start to create a hole in the ship and Moses, are you crazy? He says, you don't understand. And uh, they go on and Moses finally says, you know, he tells to Moses, I told you not to talk. You did, I'm going to have to let you go. So he says, so what are these things? And he tells him that uh, there are three things he did, Khazr, and one of them is this, that he said, I made a hole into that boat because there's a king who wants to uh, confiscate all these boats of the poor people that they loot for shipping and this and that for fishing. So I made a hole so when the king they come and they say this is not a good boat and they let go of it and the boat stays with people. So meaning that uh, Bahal is trying to say here is that if I'm not referring to these people there's a reason for uh, those days was like this. If you refer, uh, bring a lot of uh, what others have said, the people they call you a narrator, not a writer of your own. Because in the spiritual things, you have to bring your own subject and topics, you know, not so much depending on the others. And Baha'u'llah explains that here about that. Otherwise, this servant regarded himself as utterly lost, as nothing, even beside one of the beloved of God, much less in the presence of his Holy One. Exalted be my Lord the Supreme. Show it translated that glorified be my Lord the Most High. Moreover, our aim is to recount the stages of the wayfarer journey, not to set for the conflicting utterances. The word conflicting, it is her own uh, extra word here. There's no word like that. It just has to be the set for the utterances. No, but it should be set for the words of the mystics. That's it. Okay. Although brief example had been given concerning the beginning and ending of the relative world, the world of attributes. See? This is another one of those. The word says, Avalem Nesfi and Avalem Ezafi. Let's see it. Baha'u'llah uses the word alam nisbi wa izafi. Alam nisbi, or alam means word, nisbi means relative. So alam nisbi means relative word. Alam izafi, izafi means addition, extra. Alam. So if you translate this relative world, alam nisbi, or additional world, or whatever, you've gone wrong. Because although these are general terms, they are referring to the writings or the ideas of Aristotle. And a book, you should know it, probably called Categories. And he has ten categories. One is the essence, and nine of them are uh, deriving from that essence. It's just ten categories. This is that. So the translation to say is that concerning the beginning and ending of the relative world, the world of attributes, no. The whole thing has to be changed. Although a brief example had been given concerning, now I translate after that, concerning 
the first and the last of the categories of relation and affection. Because the categories, I don't tell you what's the category of affection. Aristotle says that the certain word cannot be applied just by one person. If you say Abbas is a man, his body explains and demonstrates that he's a male or somebody else is a female. But if you want to say Abbas is a father, all of a sudden you're giving him some kind of a terms that requires him to have a son. So Aristotle says the word father is not applicable unless there are children. Children. There are many words like that. You know, if you say colorful book, it is. If there are colors, if there's no color, then the word colorful really. This, the word father, then it is an addition. It requires an additional. This is what Baha'u'llah says. And I don't know how did she end up translating it like this is because she didn't know that these are the two references. This is Alam and Nisbi, the word of Nisbi. One of these, I think, category four is relation. Things are known relative to others. Reference to time and place and all that. I'm not interested in uh, those old, you know, regurgitating of the past, but uh, this one is a reference to that anyways. It's nothing what has been translated. So I'm going to say that again. Although a brief example had been given concerning, she translated, the beginning and ending of the relative world, the world of attributes. This has to be changed to the first and the last of the categories of relation and affections. Definitely somewhere has to be written of the categories of Aristotle. Yet a second illustration is now added. And here Baha'u'llah exactly explained that. That the full meaning may be manifest. For instance, let thine eminence consider his own self. Thou art first in the relation to thy son, last in the relation to thy father. That's where the relation comes in the middle. In thine outward appearance, thou tellest, thou tellest of the appearance of the power in the realm of divine creation. And thine inward being, thou revealest. Reveal us the hidden mysteries which are thou divine, which, which are the divine trust deposited within thee. And thus, firstness and lastness, outwardness and inwardness, all of it, I'm using a show if any translation, and thus the first and the last of the manifest and the hidden, this is a show of translation, the first and the last of the manifest and the hidden, instead of saying of the firstness and the lastness, outwardness and inwardness, the all in the sense referred to true of thyself, that in these four states confirm upon thee thou shouldest comprehend the four divine estates, and that the nightingale of thine heart on all the branches of the a rose tree of existence, whether visible or concealed, should cry out, He is the first and the last, the seen, not seen, the manifest and the hidden. Again. Because the seen has been translated as manifest by Shurifan. So it wants to tell him that how you could be first and last in a circle. You look, every point of a circle, circumference is first and last. Once we are in this global existence, everything is really around. Every end goes to a beginning, every beginning goes to an end. Difficult idea was for them. Still it is. They think Muhammad is the last prophet of God, and they don't understand last in their reference. It really means the first. Okay. The statements are made in the sphere of that which is relative. The sphere of that which is relative has to be changed to relative words. These statements are made in the sphere of that which is relative, in bracket, relative words, because of the limitations of man. Otherwise, those personages 
personages who in a single step have passed over the world of relative and limited no, restrictions and dwelt on the fair plane of absolute no singleness and pitched their tent in the worlds of the authority and command no command has to be cause amr in, in, in Baha'i faith does not mean command in amr in the Baha'i faith its original word is amr amr means cause faith of God authority and cause have burned away this relativity relativity relativities with a single spark and blotted out these words with a drop of dew and they swim in the sea of the spirit and soar in the holy air of light no in the mystic realm of light then what life have words no then what not life but degree then what degree have a words on such a plane that first and last or other than these be seen not seen be noticed or mentioned in this realm the first is the last itself and the last is but the first in thy soul of love build thou a fire I changed it fire up by the love of the most beloved then and burn all thought and words entire burn away all the worshipping and speculations that's my translation burn away all worshipping and speculations oh my friend look upon thyself hadst thou not become a father or begotten a son neither wouldst thou have heard the saying now forgot them all that thou mayest learn from the master of love in the schoolhouse of oneness and return from we and to God no from we and to shall return this word Baha'u'llah says from enna us to Raja'un because the original verse of Quran says enna lillah wa enna ilayhu Raja'un we are from God and from to him shall we all return so Baha'u'llah says from the enna which is us understand the word return she just translated like this but it's from the word we and now and to God no and to shall return we shall return okay and forsake the inner land of and reality for thy true station I changed it and from the virtual reality attain thine thine through a station and dwell within the shadow of the tree of knowledge Although the other one impoverished thyself, not thyself, impoverished thy ego. Here self means ego, it doesn't mean self. Impoverish thy ego, that thou mayest enter the high court of riches and humble thy body, that thou mayest drink from the river of glory and attain to the full meaning of the poems wherefore thou hast asked. The God was asking some poetry, no one knows what those were, but Paolo says, I'm not going to explain it to you, but i tell you how to get about it. Thus it has been made clear that these stages depend on the vision of the wayfarer. In every city he will behold the world, in every valley, rich a spring, in every meadow near, hear a song. But the falcon of the mystic heaven had many wondrous carol, the spirit in the breast, and the Persian, <laughs> not Persian, Iraqi bird keep it in his soul many a sweet Arab, no, Hijaz melody. Yet these are hidden and hidden shall remain because Baha'u'llah was in a situation that could not even tell them that he is the new manifestation of God. If I speak forth, many a mind will shatter and if I write, many pen will break. Peace be upon him who concluded this exalted journey and followed the true one by the light of guidance. And the wayfarer, and the wayfarer after tra traversing the high plane of this supernatural journey entered the valley of wealth. Okay, eternal wealth. All right, I guess so far I try to explain a little bit of the word that how even to read this properly 
uh, this took a little bit more time. I think I need a second uh, video. I uh, will make this value of unity number one and the number two where I'm going to use the writing of Baha'u'llah to exactly what he means by this value of unity. He has his own writing. It's very clearly tells you what it is. And I'm going to bring up uh, uh, some of my own thought and understanding of the issue that I have learned. This I shall have to let it go next time because uh, I think we're already past the one hour. Okay, may Baha'u'llah be with you and uh, hopefully I will be able to continue. Who knows? Whatever the life is, is inching away every day out of my body. Thanks to God for that.